Hi, my name is Michael Skelfo and welcome to Russell House Tavern. Uh, today we're going to be making Arctic char seared in a pan for you, uh, served with bulgur wheat salad and tarragon roasted apples. Uh, to make this dish, the way we do it at the restaurant is we get bulgur wheat going. Uh, bulgur wheat would be uh, couscous, you know, if you would know it by couscous, that would be the most familiar way uh, for you to recognize it. What we do is just add a few bay leaves to it, add a little bit of salt and pepper, and then we've got some hot vegetable stock. And the hot vegetable stock is going to kind of get poured over the bulgur wheat. And then the bulgur wheat is just going to take it on just like you would cook pasta at home. And as it takes it on, it's going to get tender and cook just like a pasta. And then we've got some saran wrap. Conveniently ready to go here. And then just wrap the bowl tightly so no air can escape. And it's going to tent up on you a little bit. You'll bu it'll uh, kind of bubble up from the heat. And that's how you know you got a good seal. And you're just going to set it aside over here. And then while we're doing that, we're going to get um, some leeks going for the salad. And uh, the leeks are just a nice, mild, oniony flavor. Uh, at the restaurant, we fry them up crisp and put them on top for a garnish. And then we also um, incorporate them into the salad. So we're kind of layering the flavor of the leeks. So I've got a nice clean leek here, we're just going to cut it in half. So I've got a nice warm pan here ready to go, which I'm going to add a little bit of butter to. I'm also going to add a little bit of olive oil. And the olive oil is going to give it a little bit of flavor and it's also going to keep the butter uh, from scorching on us. So while that's starting to melt down, we're just going to take these leeks. We're just going to slice them kind of thin. They don't have to be perfect, um, but you do want to cut them kind of uniform and kind of thin because um, it is a salad. Um, and the bulgur wheat's kind of small, so you don't want these big obnoxious pieces of leek in there that aren't really going to jive with the rest of the texture and size of the salad itself. So that's enough leek for the portion we're doing here. It's going to add that to the pan. I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Move it around a little bit. And then we're just going to turn that heat down and we're going to let them cook for about 20 minutes or so on low heat. We don't really want them to get any color. We just want them to kind of melt in the pan, get a nice kind of sweet oniony flavor. Uh, and then we're going to move on to roasting the apples for the salad. Okay, so we've got our leeks melting in the pan and now we're getting ready to do our roasted apples for the dish. These are tarragon roasted apples and for this we're going to use a gala apple. Um, the reason we use gala apples, or I like to use gala apples, is they're crisp apples and they're really sweet apples. Uh, a lot of apples are softer in texture, kind of mealy. Um, these are really crisp, they're sweet, they take well to cooking and they kind of retain their crunch, which is good, otherwise everything in the salad would be kind of mushy and you don't really want that. You want to have a little bit of texture in there to go with everything else. So I got my apple. Uh, we need about 8 to 10 wedges. I've got some fresh tarragon here, some olive oil, so we're just going to quickly cut up the apple best way to do that is just kind of go around the core, kind of square it off, get rid of it, um, and then cut your wedges up, throw them in a bowl. Depending on the size of the apple, it might take a full apple. Looks like we're going to get away with just a little bit less than a full one, so we got a little snack left over. Uh, we're going to take some fresh tarragon, pick that up. Tarragon's already kind of cleaned up. We don't need to fuss with it too much. It's a rustic dish. We don't have to cut it microscopic. It's just a quick rough chop. Get it into the pan with the apples. Now while we've been doing this, we've had an oven preheated to 400 degrees. We've had a cookie sheet in there. Probably at home you're using a cookie sheet. Um, and that's getting hot. So we can basically just take the apple wedges, dress them with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some salt and pepper, of course. Give them a quick toss. They're ready to go. Now I'm going to get my pan from the oven and we're just going to cook the apples off. Okay, so I've got my hot pan ready to go here. The apples are tossed and ready. We're just going to put them right on there. Want to spread them out, get the cut side down. So the apples are on the pan. We're going to cook them 400 degrees, seven to nine minutes, but we're really going to kind of watch them for color. Uh, everybody's oven's a little bit different at home. Watch for a little bit of browning, but you want them to stay nice and crisp for the salad. So once you see a nice little golden brown on them, you're good to go. Okay, so now we're ready to do our Arctic char, cook it up in a pan for you. Um, 
Arctic char is kind of a cross between salmon and trout. Uh, for people that like salmon, but maybe not the fishy, strong fattiness of salmon, this is the perfect fish uh, because it is fresh water. It has a lot of trout characteristics, so it's, uh, it's lighter and milder. Um, really great fish. Uh, fresh water and salt comes from uh, actual Arctic waters. Um, and it's nice. You don't see it in restaurants a lot, so we use it here. Uh, and it's a popular dish for us. So we're going to season it with salt and pepper. I've got a pan heating in the background, getting nice and hot. I'm gonna season the back as well, because the skin's really the best part here, and we're gonna do a preparation on it. I'm gonna give it a couple quick scores, uh, just a couple cuts in the back. This is optional, you don't have to do this at home. We like to do it because it's nice for presentation. It also helps the fish uh, not curl up on you in the pan. So my pan's hot, a little bit of oil in there, you want to have a nice smoke point on the oil uh, so you can get a nice crispy skin on the fish. But the trick is here, and we're going to put the fish in the pan, we're going to put it, lay it in away from us because if we do it towards us, you got a risk of a little oil burning you. You don't want that. So we're going to go right into the pan away from us and we're going to let it go here. It's going to take about five minutes on just the skin side, but the key here is to actually turn the heat down. So we're going to watch for a little bit of browning on the edge of the fish. When we see that browning, that's your cue to turn the heat down to about a medium heat and then let it continue to cook on the skin side. We're not going to flip the fish until the very end. So I'm already starting to see a little bit of browning on the side, which is a good sign. I'm just going to turn my heat down low here and we're just going to let that fish cook, okay? Skin's going to get nice and crispy um, and we're going to give it a flip at the end and then put the dish together for you. Okay, so our fish has been cooking for about five minutes. We've got nice color coming all the way through, so that's our cue to kind of give the fish a flip. We're just gonna turn it over in the pan. You can see we've got nice color, nice crisp. We're gonna turn the heat off. And we're just gonna let it sit for about three minutes. Now, while that fish is sitting in the pan, we can put together the dish. We've got a mixing bowl. I've got the uh, wheat ready to go. Just gonna get rid of these bay leaves here. And you can see it's nice, absorbed all the water, light and fluffy. We're gonna hit it with some more salt and pepper. Uh, we've got some nice rendered pancetta here that we do in the restaurant. We make our own, you can get it at the store, good quality, you can use bacon, whatever you want. You can leave it out all together too if you don't like the bacon. Um, we've got some parsley and tarragon mixed together here. Gonna add a nice little shot of that. Got some lemon here. We're just gonna zest in a little bit of lemon. Uh, the lemon's going to be nice. It's going to brighten it up a little bit. It's going to give it a little bit of acidity and cut through the richness of the bacon. Um, and obviously lemon pairs nicely with fish. So we've got that tag in there. Some extra virgin olive oil. It's going to give it a nice toss. Now we can add our leeks in right into the salad. Again, the leeks cooked nice and soft. They didn't really get any color, but they're super tender. Melted just like butter. Leeks in. Apples are good to go. Got the apples with a nice roast on them. Just gonna add those right in. Apples and tarragon, another great combination. So we're kind of just building the flavors in the salad, kind of getting it all together. We've got a nice contrast, color, texture, flavor. It's all gonna go really nicely with the fish. This is a great dish. You can do this summer, winter, fall, all year round. Okay, so we've got a plate ready to go. Now we made enough here. This recipe is gonna make enough for two portions, uh, but we're gonna plate up one for you right now. We've got a nice little plate here. It's gonna take about half of our mix and we're just gonna set it up in the center of the plate. We're going to reserve half for the other portion. Let's kind of clean up our plate a little bit. Our fish is ready to go. I take the fish and just kind of set it up on top of the salad here nice. 
So now you could serve this at home just like this. This could be ready to go. You could drizzle it with a little olive oil. You could put a fresh parsley on top of it. Um, at the restaurant, we take a little bit of uh, black pepper. Just kind of go around the exterior of the plate. We take a little nice extra virgin olive oil just to finish. Come around the outside and we've got some nice leeks. And we take the leeks. You could do this at home if you like. This is how we do it at the restaurant. They're just fried quickly, tossed in a little bit of flour. Very simple and just browned up. We just take a nice little handful of those at the restaurant. Just pile them right up on top. So that's the Arctic Char at Russell House Tavern. Now you have the recipe and you can make it at home yourself.